So first and foremost, it's a good point. We need to distinguish between the general rubric terms and the rubric terms that are specifically woven into the question at hand, right? So with the question you've been asked, that question will be, have been informed by the rubric, right? Which is that that module description that you're all aware of. Common module, you know, words like um, anomalies, inconsistencies, paradoxes. Those terms are used to inform the question you get asked. However, as Ken's alluding to, there is still relevance for the other rubric terms, even if they're not the ones that have been focalized in that particular essay question. So what's the balance there then? Well, uh, first and foremost, definitely prioritize the words of the question and the, the rubric terms that have been used in the question. They would be the, the main ones, of course, and you use them as we've been saying. But in terms of the other rubric terms, it, it, there's no there's no straightforward rule to it. I mean, I would my advice would probably differ module to module slightly. I would say where possible, incorporate the really important terms in. Like if you can find paradoxes, if if you can, you know, there's a lot of times where you'll be talking about things that relate directly to a rubric term, term, and you've just forgotten or you just haven't realized that there's a direct link there. You should add it in in that point. It's the same rule for using a key term of a question, though. You need to be specific with how you use it. You need to define it. So if the rubric term is anomaly and you've been talking about, you know, um, Ken, you were doing merchant, weren't you? So you're doing, you're talking about Shylock as an outsider. Well, he's a, a bit of an anomaly then. But it's like you might be talking about him as an other or an outsider. And yet you could have said he's an anomalous other or something like it's, it's kind of just weaving it in, in the spots where it kind of makes sense to, if that makes sense. So you, you, you need to just be aware of where those rubric terms would fit into your existing argument. But on the day, you obviously need to prioritize the key terms of the question. So, so use them wherever you can be conscious to use them occasionally, but there, there's no, I, I wish I could give you like a strict rule. I would just say, look for any opportunity to do so in terms of your analysis, if that makes sense.